Hello students, today I am going to explain you the last chapter of your supplementary reader. The name of the chapter is An Alien Hand by Jayant Nerlikar. Introduction of the chapter, the superior technology of the people of Mars detects an alien spacecraft coming towards their planet. This spacecraft is actually the Viking one which is sent from earth to investigate if there is any life on Mars. But what happens when the alien spacecraft lands on Mars and do the people of earth find out about the people living on Mars? The main characters of the story are Tillu, Tillu's parents, the president of the central advisory committee, other advisors and scientists. Summary of the chapter, Tillu and his parents live on Mars, however, they do not live on the surface of the planet. They live beneath the surface under artificial conditions. Only some very skilled persons in special suits can go on the surface. When they go with a reservoir of oxygen for important work. Tillu's father is one of them. He goes to work through a secret passage. Tillu has always been anxious to go through the passage. However, he has been never allowed. One security card. Quietly, he makes his way to the forbidden passage. He slips his father's card into a slot. The door to the passage opens. Tillu now looks forward to seeing the sun or the stars. He has never seen them before. But what was not to be? He moves hardly 10 steps with the security staff gets hold of him. He is sent back to his mother. Tillu's father decides to brief him properly. He tells Tillu that he cannot survive on the surface. The air is too thin and the temperature too low there. So he advises him not to try again to reach the surface of the planet. Tillu's father tells him that once upon a time their forefathers lived on the surface. But times changed. A slight change in the sun upset the balance of nature on the planet. First, the birds became extinct. The animals followed. The fish also died. Human beings survived because of their sup superior technology. They use solar energy. Some of these machines which produce solar energy are on the surface. Tillu's father belongs to a special group. It is this group's responsibility to look after these machines. He assured Tillu that he could also join the team when he grew up. His mother, however, warned him that it was possible only if he obeyed his parents. Next day, when Tillu's father went to work, he found the control room full of excitement. It was so because they had seen two spacecrafts. So far, it had been their belief that they were alone in the solar system. Although the conference room was full of capacity, full to capacity, Nobody was speaking a word. They waited for the president to say something. The president looked at his paper carefully. After a pause, he said that two spacecrafts were approaching their planet, while one of the two was orbiting the planet and the other was still far away. It was the president's guess that they were from their neighboring planet. Thereupon, he asked the opinion of his colleagues. Together, they had to deal with these spacecrafts. Number one was in charge of defense. He told what his reports had revealed. It was that the spacecraft did not contain any living beings. It had only instruments. He suggested that there was no need to destroy those spacecrafts. After the landing on Mars, they could make them if ineffective if they so chose. Number two also agreed with number one. He added that by destroying those spacecrafts, 
they would be only revealing their existence. Number three also agreed with what the other two had said. Just then the president got the message that the first spacecraft craft had landed. It was a red letter day in Tilu's life. Red letter day means important, very important day. His father had brought him to the control room. From here he could see the alien spacecraft on his TV screen. He looked with great interest at a panel with several colored buttons on it. His father told him that this pane was very important. Through its buttons they had power to make ins insert any part of the spacecraft. Sorry, it is inert. Suddenly there was some movement in the spacecraft. All eyes were now glued to the TV screen. A mechanical hand was coming out of the spacecraft. It bent and touched the soil. Everyone in the control room was watching with great interest. Top could not contain himself. He pressed the red button on the panel. There was shrill whistle. His father pulled him away roughly. Then he restored the red button into its earlier position. But the damage was done. The mechanical hand of the spacecraft had ceased work. And this was happening on the Mars. On the Earth, NASA was holding a press conference. The spacecraft had come from the Earth. NASA had sent it. In the press conference, it was said that everything was well with the spacecraft. Only the mechanical hands had stopped working. They, however, expressed confidence that very soon everything will be set right. Soon after this, another press conference was held. It was informed that the mechanical hand had been reactivated. Soil samples were being collected. These samples would reveal whether there was life on Mars or not. This was the part of Earth's Viking mission. The scientists behind the mission were disappointed. They found no signs of life on Mars. Moral of the story is we must look after our planet and its climate. Otherwise, we won't be able to live on it. Thank you students. I hope you have understood this chapter. For better understanding, thorough reading is required.